crazy. Anyway, we're starting to record now, and now we have He's to nuts, go out yeah. on uh, Facebook. He got he has the Buckner he ball and everything. Show. Okay. Does he really? There yeah. You go. There you yeah, go. He's, yeah. Okay. He's yeah. He's he yeah, said I don't care what it costs. I want it. Uh, so he has yeah, that. We're, we're he has like a, he has like okay. I don't and know how much is the art Josh, collection. Crazy. And yeah. I want to do. He's one the new Steinbrenner, basically. Uh, let's just. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Let me stop this. Here. I just want somebody to give the Dodgers a challenge because uh, Dodgers. And so here they we start with year. the audio yeah. on it, and we're <laughs> ready to go. With uh, we well, we've got Jeff Stein is here, and uh, uh, Charlie's here, and Jeff uh, and uh, Brian Neary is here, and a new guy <laughs> Matt Sheridan is here, and as uh, we'll be seeing uh, Kevin here in a second. But this is your hour now, Josh. And All right. You make the best of it because I don't want to have to make excuses for you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I think we'll be all right. Kevin will be back in a minute, too. Okay. Well, I'm getting out of here. So the show is um, all yours. Okay. We'll see so you later. Wait a minute. I got to make you a co host. Yeah. You should probably do that in case anybody calls. Yeah. In case anybody calls. I might want to call and tell me how wrong I am or something like that. <laughs> I'll see you guys in an hour. Later. Bye. Hey, don't, don't fall asleep. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. I'm good. Oh, so we were you're talking sports between the breaks there. I, I don't have any problem with that. I mean, that's you know, it's no problem. Nothing wrong with that. The uh, so we were, talking, hold, hold on one oh. second. I got to turn down some uh, audio here. Uh, <laughs> ba, 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 ba. All right, we'll be ready to go. It shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. Okay. <laughs> Who's this Alex guy? What? Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Now I think we're ready. Okay, I think want to. You want to go? Okay. All right. We'll be good. No, plenty of sports talk between the between the two shows. There, nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> but tomorrow's a big day, though. There's uh, most of the games are tomorrow. Yeah. There's a couple games on Christmas that are uh, a couple bigger games, but you know a lot of a lot of big games tomorrow. I think. Uh, you know, pretty much the majority of the schedule is tomorrow. Um, Jets lost, uh, you know, Thursday night, which kind of funny. I, I don't know. I mean, I've joked for a long time that the, the job that I really want, like, in life is to just sit here in this chair and watch TV. And then when a sports franchise wants to do something that they're not sure about, they could just call me. And I could just like pick up the phone and I could just, hello, you know, the, this is the New York Jets. We want to draft Zach Wilson with the second pick. And I could just be like, you know, I'll get right back to you just a second. And, you know, while they were on hold, I could fucking dick around or something. And then I could come back and I could be like, no. And then I would hang up and like a few minutes later, I would get a ding on my phone that says a direct deposit was made to my account for like $175,000. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, <clears throat> you'd like to hire Brian Kelly to be the coach of your college football team. <clears throat> do you plan on playing any bowl games or do you plan on playing anybody that's any fucking good? You do? <laughs> um, hang on a second. Let me think. No. You know why? Because um, he loses every one of those fucking games. He's like the white man's version of Marvin Lewis. Uh, okay. Yeah. That'll be all. Thank you. You know, another hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. And if they really want, the NFL could call me on Sunday and be like, "Was that a touchdown? We we we've been looking at it for the last fucking twenty minutes. We can't figure it out." And I could be like, "Yeah, I'm pretty drunk, and it's still a touchdown. You know, you, no problem. You know." So I wish that were that's the only job in life that I think I ever really wanted was that one. I don't know, but I'm probably never going to get it. But that would be pretty cool. I mean, yeah. but it's never going to happen. But I don't know. You know, I, I watched that Thursday night game. And I mean, look, I know all people don't come out of the gate like Burrow did or an Andrew Luck did. Well, he, you know, but I mean, I don't know, maybe five years from now, we'll all have been wrong, but they got a problem at quarterback. You know what I mean? When you wasted the second pick and the, your your first round pick, which was the second pick in the entire draft, yeah, on a guy who looks fucking lost, I mean, 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you go from there. I mean, that's, you know, that's what I've said. That's what it, I've talked to Kevin about this before. I was like, you know, I know they've tried to run Garoppolo out of San Francisco before, and, and it's fine. I mean, I know they got their problems and everything, but like, if you're not 100% positive, when you do something like that, you're going to get stuck with a, a Zach Wilson or something. And then you're screwed for two or three years. You know what I'm saying? Four or five years could go by and you've done nothing because of what you had wasn't good enough. I mean, you know, it just uh, – that's the way the NFL works. I mean, it's not like baseball where you can buy your way out of a mistake if you have enough money. I mean, free agency does change the NFL. But you can't often buy a top-tier QB. They're just not going to let him, you know what I'm saying? I mean, right. New England made that mistake with Brady, you know. And, and, I mean, I know this year is an example, but the last two years, you know, they won a Super Bowl in 11 games and went to the divisional round of the playoff. I mean, but that's, what, one time in the last – I mean, how many big-time QBs really <laughs> change teams? I mean, you know, the Broncos managed to try to buy one every couple of years because they can't figure out how to draft one. And then the one that they just bought, I think they wish they could give back. You know, uh, there's another one that should have called me. I mean, the Broncos spent $240 million when they could have just called me here. And, and for $240,000, I could have just said, what, what the fuck are you talking about? What? Do you realize that a team is going to give him to you and replace him with Geno fucking Smith, right? I mean, are, are you fucking hearing what I'm telling you? They think Geno fucking Smith is better than him. And you can give him some <laughs> draft picks and pay him a quarter of a fucking billion dollars, motherfucker. What the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, it's my check in the mail yet, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> Where's that wire? <laughs> yeah, I'm just say, I mean, like, what? But, you know, it's just, that's, I don't know. I watched that game and it's like, you know, okay. I mean, New York was, you know, they were pretty high on him. And then, you know, he's now, then he was on the bench and then he was back only because the other guys hurt. And they, I mean, that's the worst thing you can do. They're, they're stuck in quarterback purgatory now. I mean, I'm serious. They're in quarterback purgatory. And when you get there, you don't know how long you're going to be there and when you're going to get out. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. where, where I live in Columbus, Ohio, metropolitan area. I live south of that, okay? But in this area, there's all these people that live here that are fans of the Steelers, all right? Now, I know they got people sort of nationwide, but it's really big here. And they all have some reason that they couldn't, even though they were born and raised here, 90 minutes from Cincinnati, 90 minutes from Cleveland, they've all got some stupid made-up reason of why they're on that bandwagon. It's the dumbest shit ever, you know? Well, like, when I was a little kid, you know, my babysitter's boyfriend, he really liked uh, Perry Bradshaw, and, and he was always watching the games and stuff, and, you know, I just I just like the Steelers. Like, whatever. Okay. But anyway, they all got the reason, and it's the same shit for the last four or five years here. You know, they would lose a game, and they would be like, oh, man, fucking Roethlisberger. He hadn't fucking thrown an interception, you know, like, I can't wait till we get rid of his ass. And I'm thinking, really? Okay. Okay. You, do you all motherfuckers really think you're going to get rid of him and win 11 games a year every year after that? Mm, okay. Uh, I can't wait to get rid of his ass, too. That's fine. Uh, so, how's that working out for him? I mean, that that's all I'm saying about saying, I don't, Kevin can tell me whatever he thinks about it because it's his deal, but that's what I think about San Francisco. I mean, are they going to get rid of Garoppolo and think that they're going to keep going to the playoffs every year? I no, mean, they think Purdy's the Purdy, answer. Yeah, Purdy. Purdy they, Purdy. they are compa- and, and I, I know Kevin, it's not you. It's the whole 49er thing. But these guys are posting these 49er chat things, and I don't know why they keep adding me on their suggestions. I keep deleting that crap. But they keep comparing him. They show a picture of of of. Uh, Walsh kneeling down and talking yep. with Montana, yep. and then they have another picture underneath of you know what's his name Lynch or no uh, what's his name Coach yeah. and then and, yeah, and him yeah kneeling down exactly like that they photoshopped it so it looks that and I and I they're saying even with with Jalen going out 
they put, oh, now if the 49ers win out and the Eagles lose out, the 49ers have the home field advantage through the playoffs. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> yeah, it it's going to be interesting. This, I'm going tomorrow, and it's going to be interesting because if they lose, all hell's going to break loose, and everybody's going to be all fucked up. Yeah, you know, I, I've, I've, you know, sports all my life too, like you guys. And, and man, you see these guys come in, and they're, you know, very, very good. All of a sudden, the shock to the system. You know, one of my friends, Ryan Jensen, pitched for the Giants, and um, yeah. he, he, he came in there from what's his name's injury. And man, he won 13 games in a row, half, half of the season, and then going into the next season. But going yeah. into that next season, I went and saw him one game. It was batting practice. They well, were hitting off yeah. him like crazy. I mean, it's just like Brock Purdy. I mean, whatever, playing well. And that's fine. But, you know, before you move on from Garoppolo, just call me up and I'll just be like, man, <laughs> you remember, you remember Matt Flynn? They used to put this guy named Matt Flynn in the game, and he would throw for like 385 yards as a backup. And then someone said, man, this motherfucker needs to be a starting quarterback. And they gave him like 100, and then mm, he lasted like three games. You know, I mean, like people, uh, so not people around here like Cleveland a lot. Oh, Baker Mayfield so great. Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield. And I remember telling somebody one time, this was in like, I don't know. It was no time during football season, training camp, nothing. I don't remember what month it was, but I just remember saying, like, do you know that right now tonight, it's like Friday night at like 10 o'clock at night, and we are nowhere near football, training camp, or anything. And I guarantee you right now, somewhere, there is a guy in his fucking basement in a room like mine, and all he is doing right now is watching film trying to figure out how the next time we play Baker Mayfield, his ass ain't going to do shit. Yeah. Because that's the NFL. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all right, you lit it up for a little while, Holmes. Let's find out what happens now. Because we've seen it. We're going to work on it. We're going to do what we're going to do, whatever we got. And I'm just saying, like, there is some guy who is making $80,000 a year as like an assistant assistant or what. And he is sitting around doing nothing but trying to figure out how he's going to be a head coach one day. And the only way he's going to get there is to, is to be watching this. I mean, like he is at that point in his life, dedicating himself to figuring out how to not play Baker Mayfield two times next year in this division and not lose both games. Like that's what, that's what will happen. So you, you can't go off of like four or five games or, I mean, you know, because once people, once people see it, they're going to say, all Enjoy. right, enough's enough. You know what I mean? This shit's got to stop at some point, you know? So that's that's how you get confidence of, like, I mean, that's how you get confidence in, like, Burrow in Cincinnati, for example, or, you know, other guys. I'm just saying that one's ones that are close to here. You know, because you see where he's played people three, four, and five times, and it's not – they're getting – he's still winning. You know, I mean, you know. They're not stopping what he's doing yet. I mean, so it'll keep going for a while, but that's what I would worry about, I guess, in San Francisco is did this guy just come on and, like, light it up in the midst of a playoff run when the team was playing well? You know, perfect timing. I mean, what's going to happen after an entire offseason of people being like, so he's their new guy? You know, you think Seattle and everyone in their division isn't going to sit around and be like, hey, we got to play them twice next year. I mean, you know, two games in the NFL is a big part of your schedule. It's like yeah. 30 games in Major League Baseball. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, this, yeah, you, man, your job this offseason is to figure out how to make him cry like a fucking bitch next time we play. Him, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's your fucking job, you know, so that uh, that's what I would worry about there. I mean, I don't think. Yeah. Sure, I and figure out how Shanahan's going to use him, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Shanahan, well, Shanahan is not hard to figure out. Yeah. But that's a good counterpoint, though, because for as much as somebody was figuring out how to stop somebody, there is someone on the other side of that trying to figure out how you're going to counter that, right? You know what I'm saying? How you're going to make the guy better or whatever. Right. I mean, right. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, those, you know, those, linemen, those linemen are looking at guys' <clears throat> fingers. 
you know, when they're in the set position, they're looking to see the, the whites of their knuckles to see if they're like pressed backwards, if they're going to be coming back on the guy or going forward. Yeah. Those guys are like all aligned with that. Yeah, too. I mean, you know, and look, teams, teams make mistakes. I mean, that you look, there was a lot of talk in Cincinnati in the first four or five games of the year when even though they didn't lose all those games, they had a lot of struggles and they did lose a couple of them that they shouldn't have. Where, you know, somebody came out and said, like, look, man, 80% of the time that Burrow was under center, they ran the ball. Mm. And teams were like, he's under center, they're running the ball. I mean, there and there were certain things that they never did from under center. They hadn't thrown no deep passes. I mean, you know what I'm saying? They were just, they got complacent, right? Or whatever. I don't know. And then about three or four weeks into the season, somebody, I think, woke up and said, yeah, we kind of, we fucked that up, you know, and then they started to undo it. And then they got their, their offense on track. And then at the same time, their defense returned as its Super Bowl form and, you know, voila, you know, <laughs> but yeah, that's what happens. I mean, teams get, you know, they get stupid or whatever, and, you know, something dumb happens and then they, I don't know, man, they don't figure it out. Like, I think down on the field, coaches do stuff that I think it's all just too fast for coaches. I, I've often thought some of these football coaches should have like, you know, like I always hear the IndyCar racing teams have like a race strategist so that the crew chief just focuses on the car and they got a guy who figures out if we should short pit and all that, you know, like who isn't focused on the, what's going on on the radio and all that. He just gets, they should have like a, clock manager or a decision maker or something. Some of them, I don't know. Some of them are really good at it and others are just terrible. It's like, you know, I mean, just call me up, motherfucker. I mean, I'm not doing anything else. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you want to call on a regular basis, we could work out like a retainer or something. So you don't have to pay a high fee per call maybe or something like that, you know, but I don't know. It's, but San Francisco plays tomorrow, right? Four yeah. o'clock here. Yeah, so one o'clock game there. Yep. Washington. Yep. Well, I mean, that's a game they should win at home. I mean, really. They should. You know, I don't even know with the backup. Them. I mean, I don't know. You know, that's that's why I like I think I think that's why people like the NFL is, you know, because San Francisco should win that game, but will they? That's the thing. I mean, you know. Anything can happen, oh. especially this season. Yeah. yeah. And then some of the yeah, some of the crazy comebacks have been is the yeah down, right down three touchdowns is like nothing now you know yeah well mm-hmm. Cincinnati did it last week in Tampa against Tom Brady on the road they were down in Minnesota 17, 17 <laughs> three or twenty three at halftime and in the second half Brady looked like he should have retired ten years ago I mean you know I, I mean I, I mean <laughs> you know he fumbled once threw a pick I mean you know he got sacked a couple times I mean. Missed what? I mean, he was missing. Guy. I mean, you know, they they made. Aaron Rodgers is the same way. He looks terrible when he's bad, and he looks yeah. like he's a genius again when he's yeah. good. It's like crazy. Right. What about you, you know, guys? I mean, football, football, football what guys. Feel like. What's up? What, what about football? Uh, I'm mostly into hockey and baseball, but uh, uh, I'm more of just like a casual, I guess, fan of football. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like not Rangers fun. fan, Rangers fan. Yeah, I was there last night at Madison Square Garden. We beat the Islanders. Wow. Yeah. It was so wild and so much fun. <laughs> is the is the Dallas Philadelphia game in Dallas or Philadelphia? I don't remember the last Dallas. Time. In Dallas this time, yeah. In Dallas. Oh. Dallas yeah. in Dallas against Philly. I mean, that's the game and, Dallas should but, probably win, I guess. And, and the, you know, it's a rivalry game, and you know, we usually yeah. split, but but it, for the Eagles, it doesn't matter, really, you know, so that's, right. you know. I mean, that's a game Dallas should win, and they probably need it. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, well, they've got, I mean, the it, it, might, it, it yeah. might not go as big in reality, but psychologically, mm-hmm. I guess you could sit here and say, man, can Dallas really lose to Jacksonville and then the next week lose to Philadelphia on a backup quarterback at home? You know, that's two pretty bad losses. And I'm just saying, you know, that's and almost almost to the Texans, too. <laughs> yeah. They're not Royal right. I was watching yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying is, you know, they kind of got some struggles going on. So they have 54 points before the Texans. And then they come back and, yeah. and almost lose to them and then do lose to Jacksonville. How do you do that? Yeah. Well, that's All right. Jackal and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
but that that is the NFL. I mean, you know, that's uh look, I Kevin and I talked about this before, is and I know I've mentioned it publicly, but that's sort of my problem with baseball. For as much as I love it, as much money as I spend on it, its economic system is broken because yeah. it does not allow for this sort of fandom, for this sort of deep yeah. season runs and craziness and you know i mean I, I know it can be exciting but baseball has to figure out for it to not be exciting for the same six fucking cities all the time mm. you no know? i well, mean that's steve cullen <laughs> well that right of, i mean yeah. right i mean look it's his money it's his right that's the system i have no problem with that but if anyone thinks that's good for baseball i, I don't think it is i mean look if you think it's good then call us up and tell us why you think it's good <laughs> but i don't think that it's good for them to do what they're doing and for a team in Cincinnati to rebuild and then compete for one year. And then all of a sudden say, Oh, we're broke. We're going to rebuild again. I mean, what the hell kind of nonsense is that? They Even like at Oakland. <laughs> oh, sorry. Correct. sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, even Hal Steinbrenner came out and he kind of like, like disapproved of like what Steve Cullen was doing. He, he said uh, something along the lines of like every team in baseball like every fan base in baseball should feel like their team at the beginning of the season has a chance to get to the world series. Yeah. And when you have a guy like Steve Cohen doing that, like what fun is that? Like it's yeah. fun for Mets fans, but it's not fun for anyone else. But well, and they, true. Put, right, ahead, they put penalties there, right? They, they penalize, you know, look at the luxury tax for the war uh, for the golden state warriors. And they just eat it. They say, hey, we'll do that. Same with the Dodgers, right? They spend too much sure. money and, and they, they just don't care. Just like Cohen's going to do the same thing, right? Yeah. If he goes past that number, he said, oh, that's fine. That's my tax for that. And they, yeah, they, they would have to make that <clears throat> so punitive that it that it really, that it turns every $300 million contract into an $800 million contract. Yeah. Then some people will be like, I'm not paying a billion dollars for anybody to do shit. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, when that day comes, it might be different. But, you know, look, the stat in the NFL that I think still holds and is still going to hold this year, maybe if I think about, I don't know, we'd have to think. But like every year for like 15 or 20 years consecutive, someone has gone from last place to the playoffs, maybe not first place, but from last place to the play every year, every year. Mm -hmm. That does not happen in Major League Baseball. It does not. Right. And there mm -hmm. is no way that you know, anywhere near the full amount of teams in MLB can feel like they have a legitimate chance at the World Series, even the postseason. I mean, I'm just, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just, you know, the Pirates, are they're out. You know, I mean, there's just... The first you know, month, you know what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that I, I cannot understand how MLB does not understand that their economic system is broken. But... They obviously don't feel like it is because, like we said before, they had a labor agreement what just a year ago, and they all they signed it. They all said they were happy, so that must mean they're happy, I guess. But I mean, I I just don't see it. I mean, I I don't see it. I I often sit here and I say, you know, so you traded a really good player and you got these prospects, okay? These high upside prospect guys. So what? So what if they pan out? What if what so what if they all turn into all stars next year? You know what will happen? The media, the media will just say they better they better trade them because they'll never be able to afford to sign them. Cincinnati got this all star uh, shortstop this year, and he hit fifty fucking home runs, and I'm like he's gonna get a eight hundred million dollar contract. They should just go ahead and trade him to New York and get a prospect. Why? So they can do it all over again two years left. I mean, what's the point? Look at what Oakland does. I mean, they get all the, they get the team built and they piss them away. I mean, literally. As they literally, say, they don't they have the money to keep. They get a beautiful team going and then all of a sudden, well, they just trade them away. Then they trade this guy and they trade this guy and they trade this guy and they're all gone. Yeah. And they wonder why they can't put asses in the seats. I think it's true. Also gonna go to I mean, I was an Oakland A's ticket holder for freaking yeah. 20, 20 years or some odd. Yeah. And I've been a booster ever since, and it's ridiculous. I didn't sign up for the boosters last year. Yeah. I, I said, screw yeah. it. And, you know, they got these flex programs and everything else, and I didn't sign up for any of that shit either. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's just, you know, this year, if they don't 
if they don't do anything, I'm going to go back to being a Giants fan. Screw it. <laughs> when I grew up a Giants fan, I jumped ship back when the Giants were doing that shit, back in the Speck Richardson days. The Giants were doing that shit. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to put up with this shit. Uh, Haas and who was it back then? Um, I don't know. Billy, back in the Billy Ball days, they were spending money and they were buying a team and they were getting good players on the field and they were actually mm-hmm. doing shit. And Billy Martin was the, you know, the manager and they got yeah. a good team going and right. it was fun to watch. They went to the series. Mm-hmm. I saw three or four world series mm-hmm. and it was, it was, it was fun to watch. And Speck Richardson, as soon as he got a good team going, he, he piss them away and mm-hmm. I couldn't stand it. So I went over to the A's and then now they're doing it. I'm going, what the fuck? You yeah, know? I mean, they all cry poor, you know? I mean, and how do you can... cry poor when you're trading away which can make you money? I that's what I don't get would tend to agree with you. I mean, that's you know, you got somebody that'll put put you know asses in the seats, which will get you money, yet you trade them away and you still charge for a ten dollar fucking hot dog. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, <laughs> and look, I've said before, you know, since they do the same thing, they'll cry poor and they'll say, Well, we're in a small market, small market team. And I will say, well, Cincinnati has an NFL team, and they don't say we're in a small market team. We, we just can't afford it. We're in a small yeah, market. The small market team is bullshit. That's because the NFL has a different economic model. Yeah. Market, the city you're in, they, the NFL could put a team in fucking Fargo, North Dakota. You know what would happen if they'd it was a winning state. NFL team? They'd fill a fucking stadium. Yeah, they would. I mean, you know, I mean, it, hey, because the, the product they put on the field is better. You know, and, and every week, millions of the people. The thing is that they're trying to put a new stadium here in Oakland, and I don't know how they're going to get away with doing it. I'd love to see them do it, but with the, they can't put a team in the stadium. What the hell are they going to do? Yeah. Or well, they and, local athletics going to go to yeah. Vegas? I heard. Or? They're going to go to Vegas. Yeah. Which is probably what's going to happen. But that's that's MLB's problem. Is it's always some excuse. Thirty years ago, 20, 20 years ago, even. The big excuse in Major League Baseball with a bunch of teams was, well, our stadium is old. If Hmm. we get a new stadium, it will spur economic growth around the stadium, and the fans will come to the stadium, and then we'll be able to field a good team. I mean, that's what they said in Cincinnati for years. Uh, Riverfront Stadium. Yeah, Riverfront Stadium is old. We cannot afford to put a good team on the field because. No fans are coming to the game, and we feel the reason no fans are coming to the game is because the stadium is old and run down, and the fans don't like it. So if you build us a new stadium, that will generate revenue, and we will then use that revenue to build a good team. <laughs> Boy, did we get fucking lied to that. truth to that, but not a lot. There's a little right. truth to that. Yeah. So then we built you a stadium with our fucking money, yeah. and what did you do? You fucked it. You know, yeah. so okay. like Joe Pesci and Lethal Weapon, then you fucked us again. And when you got done fucking us, you <laughs> fucked us some more. You know, I'm, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, it's what happened. I'd, I'd say one. I'd say one of the best things though that happened with the Warriors' new stadium, which is in San Francisco, right on the waterfront, and with the Giants, is that that whole area had been just slumped. Uh, the old warehouses. It was a and, swamp. I mean, yeah, I mean, um, miles each way, you know, just it's a, the worst area, just like old stuff, just from all the old shipyards and stuff like that, just abandoned. Yeah. That whole area, they have hospitals now, they have all mm-hmm. this other, you know, parks and all that stuff. That whole area of San Francisco really got redeveloped, and that's like the best thing that's happened to the whole area. Yeah, they they did the same thing in Cincinnati. So the football team and the baseball team both got new stadiums, maybe like a year, year and a half apart. And it did revitalize the area. So there's about three or four blocks between the two stadiums that is completely filled now with all buildings that have been built in the last, you know, 15 years, restaurants, bars, hotels, the whole thing. And it's great. I mean, it did do things for the city, but the teams (laughs) never kept up their end of the, oh, here's your free stadium. It's time to spend your money as the owner. You know, I mean, they just didn't do it. I mean, and they're still not doing it, you know. And then baseball is so broken, like I said, that, you know, the 
the ownership of the Cincinnati team comes out this year on opening day of all days when people are asking about, you know, letting the team go down again, rebuilding again after, you know, only one season of contention, you know, and the owner's son, who is the chief operating officer of the team, so the guy who actually runs the team, saying, well, we're really not that worried about it because there's no other MLB teams close, so where are they going to go? I mean, literally, that was his quote, and it was all anything talked about for the entire first month of the season because the team started like 3-22 and 22 or something like that. I mean, you know, and people were saying, where, where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? You know, and people were like, okay, so maybe we're not going to another MLB team, but we're just not going to yours either. I mean, so, you know, they make comments like, I mean, they're arrogant. You know, they're, they're, they're fucking vindictive about shit. I mean, they just, some of these owners are just jerks. And it's like, you know, people give you their money and expect something for it. So they'll stop giving you your money. And I'll feel bad for, I mean, I could drive by the Castellini's fucking standing out there asking for money on the corner. They're so fucking bankrupt. And I fucking not giving them like motherfucker. You all got all the fucking money in your life. I'm going to give you. Fuck you, you know what I mean? You're not getting any more money. You know, I mean, it's just, but people just, I mean, they, but they know they have people because people care about, you know, sports franchises. You know, they have an investment in their life in it or whatever, you know, but I, baseball I, I, needs to reform itself, in my opinion. But apparently, Major League Baseball and the 30 owners do not feel that way or the 32 or whatever. Yeah, the 30. I mean, they don't feel that way, obviously, right? Because they're not doing a damn thing about it. I mean, why weren't these so-called small market owners like Cincinnati and Oakland and whatever, all the Minnesota twins and all that? Why weren't the last time there was a labor? Why weren't they clamoring for change? You know, why weren't they saying we're sick and tired of not being able to field competitive teams because we don't have trillions of dollars you know uh, we don't unload money at, at our docks every day like a fucking drug cartel so we can't buy a we can't buy a, why weren't they saying anything the reason they weren't saying anything in my opinion probably is because they got plenty of personal money they don't give a shit yeah. <laughs> you know because they're not broke personally I mean, yeah. I mean i don't know maybe i'm overly cynical about that or whatever but that would be my guess is that they were that they are not personally broke you know they have really big houses and plenty of personal money it would be my assumption and they probably are not like like personally even like necessarily invested in the team being successful they're just more complacent with their financial situation (laughs) some of them you know yeah that's i mean that's what i'm saying yeah right i mean like the NFL, at least in my opinion, forces you to be competitive. Um, don't get me wrong. You can have franchises that are perennially poorly run and stupid, but you do not have nearly as many of them as, as baseball does. You know, and the ones that are perennially stupid and poorly run are that way because of their ownership group and their leadership, not because of money. You know, right? Because of the cap and the contracts, the way they work, and all like the Cleveland Browns have run themselves into the ground because of the Cleveland Browns, oh, not man. because of money. Like they literally can't go out to the cameras like a baseball team will and say, "Well, we would win more games, but we just can't afford it." You know, they they can't say that because they have players and they have the opportunity to get more players through a draft and free agency and they have the same amount of money to spend as everybody else basically and things like that but they can't they so they can't make those excuses like baseball teams can you know the nfl just doesn't allow them to make that kind of excuse because of the way they have their economic i just saw i don't understand why you know baseball wouldn't be more interested in making their entire gamut of teams more competitive i i don't know but I don't know how hockey works. Do they? I thought I heard before they had a cap and all that. Is that right? Or yeah, they do. Like, there's definitely like you can't like do like hockey doesn't allow you to do like what baseball does. Like, there's no way a guy like Steve Cohen could own a hockey team because there is a cap hit. So it's like um, you definitely do. You know, I de- I guess it definitely also depending on the market a little bit. Maybe that does play into it. Like my team is the New York Rangers, 
and we are probably the most valuable team in the NHL financially. So, yeah. uh, but we can't like just go up and buy every player we can. Yeah. That's just not. Right. And, yeah. and your value is probably driven by, you know, your, the fact that you, your merchandise sales and ticket, you know, because you're in a largely populated area and everything, but at least it doesn't, I guess, I don't really know hockey, but I'm saying, but at least even if that's the case, that doesn't give you an unfair economic advantage over the Columbus Blue Jackets, for example. Yeah. Know, I guess. Yeah. If you have a cap and a, and a fair draft and things like that, you know, you know, like if some of those teams can't, you know, do things, then it's their own fault. It's the way they're running themselves. It's not, they can't, they, they can't claim poorness, you know, that's, and- and yeah, I think that's really, and I think it's healthy because there's even, there was a team a few years ago, the St. Louis Blues, that no yeah. one thought in a million years would ever win the Stanley Cup, and they did. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is I don't, I just don't get why people in baseball don't, you know, care more about that. I mean, you know, it's yeah. just. I, yeah. I got to say this really quick. I just, have, I don't want to rant too much about the Mets, Go but ahead. the thing is all these <laughs> All these Mets fans for the longest years, they were like bitching and complaining about the Yankees taking up all the money. And they were like, well, we're the blue collar team. We're the nine to five guys. We're the underdogs. And now all of a sudden they are basically run by a hedge fund, like criminal <laughs> fascist. And their, their, their baseball team, their baseball uh, uh, stadium is named after a bank. It's City Field. I'm like, you're not the oh. nine fivers. You're the Wall Street bankers now. Yeah, you're the villains. That's, that's right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's just baseball lets personal money and you know run its run its economic system too much. I mean, it's just not mm-hmm. you know. I, I, that I think that's fine in like the corporate world, but when you start involving you know fans as the investors, I mean, it's not the same. It's just you know, at least as I can get in Wall Street, I can get a return on my investment in real fucking <clears throat> money that I can then do what I want with. But me giving you my money and expecting happiness or joy back from my investment through the form of winning, you know, is naive in baseball because it's not going to happen. You know, I mean, it's just it's just stupid. I mean, that's the example that I used all the time, only because it's local. So some people might not understand it. But that's what I'm saying is, you know, 2010, you know, Joey Votto becomes the National League MVP and he's one of the top four or five players in baseball. And I'm telling you, all you heard every day, day after day on the local sports talk and even on the national sports talk, I'll drive around, listen to MLB radio on Sirius XM or what, you know, all you're hearing is, well, what's Cincinnati going to do with Joey Votto? Mm-hmm. Are they going to trade him or are they going to be able to sign him? Well, yeah. I, I we just don't know how they can afford to sign him. I yeah. mean, what are they going to do with Joey Votto? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? What if they don't sign him this offseason? And he wins the MVP again next season. Yeah. Oh my God, what will they do then? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Right? That's all you heard. But yeah. flip side, I have heard absolutely nothing, zero, not one word, not a single blip on local or national media saying, Oh my God, what, what are the Bengals going to do with Joe Burrow? Uh-huh. What, what are they going to do? What are they going to do with Joe Burrow if he wins the MVP this year? Like, that's a bad thing, right? What what are they going to do? Are they going to trade him to the New York Giants? I think they should trade him to the Jets because only the Jets could afford him. I mean, you don't hear that. (laughs) Everyone just knows they'll sign him. Now, that doesn't mean they might not have to make a tough decision after that. They might have to two years from now say, well, they can't keep Burrow, Higgins, Chase, Boyd, Mixon, you know, Hubbard, Hendrickson, they can't keep all of them. Okay, one of them's got to go. Okay, well, that's the NFL. That's they got a fucking draft, right? You know, I mean, I mean, so, but I don't hear that. I mean, it's peaceful. You can just focus on the team, the winning, mm-hmm. the, the enjoyment. But like, uh, I'm, I'm serious. I can just remember driving around in like 2009, 2010, 2011, and, you know, Joey Votto hit two home runs and six RBIs last night. And then 20 seconds later, what are they going to do with it this offseason? I mean, it's like we can't even enjoy the fact that we fucking won last night without you fuckers bringing up what we're, what they're going to do about his fucking money. 
Yeah. You know, I wish my job was that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I just did some really cool shit and I'm going to go up there right now and I'm going to ask him like, hey, motherfuckers, you all might want to start thinking about how the fuck much you're going to pay me at the end of the year. Because I'm just telling you, I did a really good fucking job today. I mean, they, they, what the hell's wrong with this fucking guy? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know. And they, just, they start talking about the Eagles have a fifth round, they have a fifth and number five draft pick next year. And they're already talking about who they're going to get then. And I'm like, dude, the freaking season's not even over. How do you know what you're going to need and all this stuff? You know, I, I, I cannot stand anymore the commentators. It's almost like the political stuff. You know, when they talk about the facts, I like that. Here's the game, right? Then they start getting these guys like, uh, man, there's a one guy who said that Steph Curry would never win another championship in his life, said that last year before, you know. And and all these guys that say this, they, they start talking out of their ass, saying, oh, this is the best guy. Then the next week, something else happens, and then this is the best guy. And they keep changing their story. So after I, I say, you know, I'll listen to the scores, watch the highlights, and then I turn it off after that. Yeah, uh, right. I mean. Unless they call you. If they're calling you, then I'll watch. They should. <laughs> I mean, like the biggest group of people in the world that I cannot stand is sports writers, especially for baseball. Because they're the fucking dumbest people. You know, I mean, they're the ones who stir up all this shit. They are. They're the ones that stir up all this horse shit. And it's like, you know, I mean, uh, football would probably be second. Like, all the same people that told me the Broncos were Super Bowl contenders because they got Russell Wilson. And, oh, I think the Colts are better than the Bengals this year. Like, motherfucker, you didn't call me, did you? You See, you wrote that shit, and you're going to look fucking stupid. And you're a sports writer. I would have gave you a discount. Like, you're a working guy. I could have told you for like a hundred bucks. I wouldn't write that, but you didn't call me. You fucking wrote it and you published it. Now your name's on it and you look like a fucking retard. So congratulations. <laughs> Very good. I mean, it's like, they just, I just named two teams that people told me at the beginning of the year were better than the team that I root for and were Super Bowl contenders. And they both changed their quarterback now twice. <laughs> I mean, it's like, Come on, give me a who on earth says some of this shit. Like, you know, I mean, uh, two weeks ago, Willie McGinnis was on the NFL Network telling me how fucking the great blah, 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 blah. And uh, apparently now he's on his way to prison. So, you know, like, <laughs> how's that fucking working out? I mean, you know, I, mean, <laughs> they, I don't know, man. They These guys get paid a lot of money to say shit, but they're not held to account for some of it. I mean, that, that that's another bad part about it. Go ahead, Matt. I just got to say, I just got to bounce early. Uh, so it was good talking to you guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll oh, let's go again, Matt. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays and happy new year, you guys. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Peace. Bye. I mean, the sports talk was light for the last deal of the year. Big games, yeah. tomorrow and all that. The uh, Charlie's probably happy that our Congress did manage to spend $1.7 trillion earlier today. Good <laughs> so, oh, job. You didn't have we'll to have shut it down. Yeah. We'll have a government for another nine or ten months or whatever. So at, at the gym, they got at the gym, they had CNN on one and then they had, I don't know, Fox on the other or something like that. And to see the difference of what they are reporting at the same time, mm-hmm. it I'm just what are these guys doing so far? Yeah, I mean I <laughs> arguing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I flipped I flipped back from my like streaming services back to my regular television input from you know and it's on c-span mm-hmm. and i came back and there's kevin mccarthy giving his fucking speech today or whatever and i flip it back and i was typing something on the computer and i was working on something so i didn't really reach to change the channel quickly or anything and i listened to about four or five minutes of it and then at one point i was like man i, I gotta turn this shit off because i can't <laughs> i can't stand to listen to him talk he's the most arrogant yeah. fucking punk bitch yeah you know what i mean like can you ever just be happy about i mean i mean like what did you he's on there bitching about how they hired you know all oh, this bill's got eighty seven thousand more guys for the irs in it you know like they're trying to make that sound like because the irs hired more people they're gonna you know come get your money or whatever like no motherfucker they hired more people for the irs because if you've ever called them you're on hold for like six fucking hours right which everyone in america bitches about i mean that's why they just stop acting like an ass for five minutes in your life would you please and just be a human being you know like (coughs) you're getting ready to go can you just shut up and just move on i mean but 
you know, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff in the spending that they did that is stupid or people don't approve of or whatever, but that's the government. I mean, so they spent 1.7 trillion. I mean, that's the numbers that we're at now. If you don't want those numbers to be where they are, then I guess start voting for different people. But one constant has been that no matter who has been in control for the last two decades, at least those have been the numbers. I mean, you know, uh, shit's more expensive. I mean, what did you think the spending bill was going to be? Like this is 1787, you know, they spent, you know, $850 or something. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, that's what it's going to be. I mean, when a bridge across a river nowadays costs $850 million, what the fuck do you expect? I mean, either, either San Jose or, or San Francisco, they just had this new trash can design for downtown. And the reason why it took so long was because the first trash can that they designed was twenty nine, twenty two or nine thousand dollars each. So mm-hmm. somebody found that out and they stopped everything and now they redid a design thing. And now I don't know how much it cost, probably two thousand dollars still. But it's like, like you're saying, the the spending is just unbelievable. I mean, but but like like defense spending went way up. That used to be something Republicans were big on, you know. Mm. I I mean, but only a couple of them voted for it. They used to love expanding the defense budget, you know. I wonder how much of that money went to their good buddy Elon Musk, you know. Wonder how much of that money went to line his fucking pockets this fucking time around. I hear anybody fucking bitching about that. I mean. I mean, it's just like they spent one point seven trillion dollars, and I wonder how many billions of that went to a fucking deranged fucking idiot, you know, who who can't string two sentences together without sounding like a dumb fuck, you know. I'm so, yeah. I mean, so I mean, who cares? I guess. I, I I mean, it's either that or the government doesn't go on because it's not the spending's not going to go down at the last minute like that. I mean, that's something that's going to have to be worked out well in advance and if it's going to go down fine i'm not saying i'm not fine with that i'm just saying then start naming the shit that you want to give up (laughs) i mean what what do you what do you want to give up i mean you know you want to cut defense okay talk about it then right you want to cut i mean domestic spending went up you know international aid i don't think did but domestic spending went up so a couple years ago they were mad because we weren't spending enough money in our own country and today they're mad because Domestic spending went up. I mean, what fucking more do you? I mean, that's that's what you, that's what you wanted to three four years ago. I mean, what do you want now? I mean, yeah, I'm sure some of that money is going to go to fight the Russians in Ukraine. Yeah. Okay, I mean, if you're not for that, that's a legit position. But uh, if someone doesn't spend money to fight the Russians, uh, then they'll win. Is that what you want? I mean, I'm just saying. You have to think about that kind of stuff, but I mean, it's a hell of a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, look, they take in a heck of a lot of money too. I mean, there are 380 you know million people or whatever live in this country, and they pay a lot of. T- we pay a lot. We pay a lot of taxes, you know, or at least some of us do. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about everybody, but some of us do. I mean, and there is a deficit, and it shouldn't probably be that way. And no, that wouldn't work in my household. But the, gov- the U.S. government is not my household. I have news for you, okay? The U.S. government has been broke as a joke, sort of, on paper, as long as there has been a U.S. government. Yeah. Okay? I mean, I can, I can get out right now. I can get out. Volume 10 of the papers of Nathaniel Green for you from the year 1782. And I can show you letters between he and and the governor of Virginia and Georgia and South Carolina, where they are all saying we're broke, especially the state of Virginia. Like we're not just broke. Like we are so fucking broke. We had to borrow money to send you this letter broke, you know, (laughs) like, like we literally had to take volunteers to spend their own money to deliver you the letter that tells you, we're not going to send you shit, okay? You're not getting any guns, you're not getting any clothes, you're not getting any troops, socks, hats, food, wine, liquor, flour, bacon, hort. you're not getting anything. You know why? Because we don't have shit. I mean, at least now we're broken, we have shit. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I, guess, I would look at it. We've got all kinds of stuff now and we're broke. As where we used to be broken, we didn't have anything. So 
as long as there's been a U.S. government, it's been broke. I mean, on paper, but it's not really. I mean, are, do we look like we're broke? We don't to me. I, you know, I mean, I think we sometimes spend money on things that we shouldn't. I mean, we all drive on roads and we think, Jesus. I mean, a blind man can fucking see this road needs paved. It has for 10, you know, when I was a kid, this road needed paved, you know, but I mean, it's just that's the way it is. I mean, so at least to me, the government stays open. I mean, I would rather have it the way that it was than have this humongous fight nonstop until the last minute or whatever. You know, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not saying that I'm not in favor of a shutdown when it's justified or there's principle to it or whatever, but I just look. You know, Congress's job constitutionally mandated is to fund the government. I mean, like that's their that's their main job. Right. I mean, that's that's it's not the only reason, but it's one of the reasons that the commander in chief of the armed forces is a president. And we have other people. You know, that's why duties were were divvied up. OK, you know, let's not have the, the president one man fund. the. You know, it's Congress's job to fund the government you know so do their job i mean you know that's that's what they they finally did today right. but, you know the political hand wringing will go on i mean i get that i mean it would never stop it just it just makes me laugh that's all i mean look democrats have done it before too i'm not gonna act like it's never happened i'm just saying you know kevin mccarthy is just like you know the most disingenuous person I've ever, I can't yeah. believe that that's who they want to be their leader. You know, I mean, well, apparently they don't. <laughs> well, you have a good point there. Yeah. Right. I mean, I guess I would kind of hope they do. I don't know because I think he's going to rub people the wrong way. Yeah. Cause to, he's just, he's just what they come across as to me is this is what I think people got tired of with Trump was they're always angry. Like everything's always so shitty. I mean, that, I, I don't know. That's what I get from them. Like, they're always talking about how shitty things are. You know, like, the country's just broke. It's just, not financially, but it's just broken. Our, our country's, you know, and I think most people are like, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's maybe not the best, but it's, you know, it's not fucking Somalia. You know, I mean, I, I mean, you know, I mean, not that bad. You they're know, always complaining if they never have a solution. Right. I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying is they're, they're like, they're always so like angry about it or what, you know, it's like someone give him a fucking Snickers bar or whatever. So just shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just right there. Oh, see, just walk. You know what I mean? Like just vote for the damn bill and eat your fucking Snicker bar. You know what I mean? Like just shut up. I, I don't know. I mean, he just, I think they're, if that's how they, you know, like, the same way with the Marjorie Taylor Greene or whatever. Like, I hope they do put her in their leadership. Make her the fucking minority leader. I don't I don't care. Good. Put her on TV every fucking day so she can talk about the dumbest shit ever that, like, really three quarters of the country is just going to roll their eyes at it. They're like, man, this fucking lady, you know, there's something wrong with her because I think there might be. <laughs> you know, like... She was in a car accident or hit her head. I don't know. You know what I mean? But she's another one that's angry all the time. You know what I mean? Just like, she's just angry. You know what I mean? Just everything's just so bad. You know, it's just like, just, it's not, there's problems. But I mean, it's the United States of America. It's a big country. Land-wise, it's very big. A lot of people live here. A lot of those people came from somewhere else. It's going to be a lot of problems. You know, I mean, it's not like. It's not fucking Iceland where there's like 14 people that live here. I mean, you know, it's a big country. I mean, there are going to be a lot of problems. There's always been a lot of problems. There's always going to be a lot of problems. Just maybe try to talk about them in a better way or like a more constructive way or what. I mean, but they're just always so, they're just always so upset or up in arms. I don't know what the term I should use is. What I know Charlie knows what I'm talking about. I mean, everything's like, the big scandal or you know i mean you know I mean, and they yeah. spend all this time on stuff that doesn't affect our lives not right not really right i mean 
you know, and, and, you know, and Democrats to their fault, allow themselves to get sucked into it sometimes, you know, which has been my fault with them for years is, you know, they'll, you know, again, you, I say these things and it'll make it sound like it's not important. And I'm not saying that it's not, but they will allow themselves to get sucked into, you know, transgender bathrooms and arguments like that. But at the end of the day, really people don't care about, it. I didn't say they shouldn't, or it's not right. Or if you are transgender and I offended you, I, I'm just saying, I'm just telling you the truth that most people, when I say most, I'm talking about like pretty much fucking everybody, you know, doesn't want to talk about that much. They're just, it's, it's not at the top of the list. It's yeah. just not. Uh, I mean, well, if you got kids in the, in your family, yeah. Now you got to deal with it. Right. Then you it do. Becomes, then it becomes serious stuff. But I want, but I almost think that like most people, and again, when I say most, I think I mean like everybody would almost have thought nothing of it if Republicans or right wingers didn't like put it in their head that this was the worst thing that was ever going to happen. I think most of them would have just been like, what? Nah, that's fucking, oh, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. You know, but then the right wing, they chip away at them day after day after day about them, making them think that there's a war on Christmas or some shit like that, right? You know what I'm saying? And then after a while, people are like, yeah, man, maybe he's right, you know? Hmm. I went to the store the other day, and that fucking bitch that checked me out, she said, happy holidays, you fucking hoe. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm just telling you the truth, man. Like, yeah. in a normal day, they would think nothing of it. And then they watch Hannity day after day after day or whatever. And then all of a sudden they're paranoid about shit. They're like, yeah, the, that guy at the post office, he didn't even say Merry Christmas. That fucker. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you his boss told him he's not allowed. You know, I mean, my mom getting that way. I mean, 30 years ago, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, greatest fucking people ever. You know, and now they just get older. I don't know. It's like they get fucking stupid or whatever, because now she would be like that. I mean, you know, I, I bet his boss said he can't fucking say Merry Christmas. <laughs> You know, this Grinch bullshit or what? It's like, what? He just, you know, doesn't does it even fucking matter. You know, I don't know. I mean, you know, they just get worked up over, like, stupidity to me. And that, I think that's what, that's what the right wing does now, is they just get worked into a lather over, you know, like, the most stupid stuff. And instead of Democrats just ignoring it, for the most part, and letting them act stupid, they sometimes get sucked into it. Yeah. And I think it, is doesn't work to their benefit, you know, because there are big parts of the country that that's not going to win for them in. But they must have done a decent job at it last time, you know, because you know they had good results or whatever. But that's what I think people got tired of with of, of Trump. You know, was when he started out, maybe a lot of people had some agreement with some of that or whatever. But after a while, he didn't do anything to fix any of it. He just kept telling you how bad it was. Bad it was. It's, it's bad. It's bad. But I think after a while, people were like, yeah, mother, but that's what you said five years ago. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't do nothing about it either. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. especially when he, I look at it. Yeah, when he started repeating the same things over on his campaign for the second second term, yeah. it's like, well, yeah. well, you just had four years. Why didn't yeah. you take this shit already? I mean, that's my thought on it is, you know, I mean, when you added that on top of all the stuff that he did that was, you know, like, <laughs> you know, completely stupid. Uh, you know, I mean, like January, you know, all that kind of shit. I mean, yeah, I think people were like, yeah, this is not a good idea again. You know, I mean, I think that's what hurt him at the end was repeating himself over and over. I mean, that's not going to work for forever. Yeah. Mate, how are you going to how are you going to run the campaign, make America great again after you right. just ran it for four years? If I hear the term witch hunt one more time. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, come up with something new to say. Yeah. But they, yeah, they did say, been pretty they did, quiet. What they did say to him is when he came out with the NFTs, his people said, you know, you really should stick to policy. Yeah. Mm. But the trouble was he couldn't come up with any policy. Well, yeah. it's true. You know, and that's what I'm saying. If you you just run around and say how bad it is, yeah. eventually you gotta say, Yeah, I'm well, telling people how bad it is, but I've been the one who's been in charge for the last five years. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I was gonna say. I'll make it better than the last guy, the last guy who was four years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, hey, listen, gang. Here we go. We're through. I'm falling asleep anyway. Are you falling asleep? <laughs> no, you guys are good. It's only 10 o'clock here. 
Yeah, well, you guys, you know, I know you, I got the wrong. You, you guys finally Fine. have a, you kind of finally have a a real sports show here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think hey, we Alex could, isn't here. Let's talk about sports. <laughs> I think we could talk about four or five hours of sports with us. Yeah, we could. Hey, well, listen, it's wonderful that you spent time with uh, Josh, and it sounded like you're all having fun. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have to find some some way to handle this with Josh. I don't know. I guess. That doesn't put as much bandwidth on me. I just erased my whole video show from tonight by accident. <laughs> oh, no. Because I was trying to do it to all do all the stuff i normally do posting the shows and stuff while you guys were <clears throat> you know so anyway it's there somewhere though isn't it huh it's there somewhere well yeah but not until well i found something it's not a good copy but i found something so um, you know okay. anyway kind of made me feel like jack for a while <laughs> Right. You wanna you wanna have him call you or something? You get yeah. help. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I should call him and say I can't post my shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know. Uh, but uh, no, it really it, it you do a great job, Josh, and I really thank you for doing it. I'm sure Jack thank you too, you. and I'm sure he won't be back immediately the first of the year. So we'll probably keep doing this with you or figuring out something we can do. You know. Uh, find something we'll find something um uh, because it's too good to just let it you know disappear <laughs> anyway hey listen everybody have yourself a really happy uh happy uh turn of events uh, you know yes. i don't know what to call it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. know, it's uh it's our long winter's nap have a nice yeah. long winter's nap and great um, holiday week yeah, yeah, good, ho good holiday week i i thank you all for participating <laughs> with me over the year and it's been a been a really nice year. I thank you. Uh, you made it really worth, it and I really appreciate it. And the people that are here right now are the people who are really the regulars, you know. And uh, nothing like having the regulars, you know. Well, we enjoy it. Yeah. What else are we going to do every night? Uh, uh, right. Probably have a life if you thought about it. You know, <laughs> gotta go with that crazy kid. You have an excuse for an hour not to have to deal with the crazy kid and lock the door. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. you're very lucky. You got a great, really <laughs> adorable daughter there. I'm telling well, you. We, we want to come and see you guys soon. So, yeah, we've been talking about it. Yeah, well, we got a room waiting for you. Ah, uh, no, not that close. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, well, then that's fine with me because I use that room to watch TV. And <laughs> so, listen, uh, have yourself a nice uh, week, and we'll see you again. Uh, what on the fourth of January for the ramble, and we'll see if you join us on uh, on Monday. Uh, we'll be doing a show this Monday oh. and the following Monday. I keep doing that show for some reason, even when I have a day off, because. Yeah, people seem to really like it. like it and they enjoy it and they would miss it yeah. if it weren't there so anyway i'll see you all uh when i see you all and see you next year. thank you so much for for joining josh and giving him a good time too and yeah, thank thanks, you josh, josh. Thank yes, you, thanks josh, for doing it thanks yeah you were. okay bye-bye good night. everybody good night okay good night. now i gotta figure out how to turn this whole thing off <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember oh here we go stop